Bonjour et bienvenue à Courcheval et bienvenue à ma chaîne de YouTube. <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. I'm really, really sorry if it's completely wrong. I'm not French. However, I um, I learned French when I was really young and I learned it all through from like five years old right up to university. And I just lost it. I've completely lost it. I'm trying to get it back. So if you're French, leave a comment below to motivate me. <laughs> Um, and let me know if I was wrong. I don't mind the criticism, honestly. I'm trying to improve and it will help me. So, welcome to Courchevel, welcome to my channel. Um, if you haven't been here before, welcome back if you have. Today's sequence is uh, actually a pre-snowboarding sequence that I take, um, which helps me to not have sciatica post snowboarding. Um, it's actually the sequence that I take before I do a lot of different types of training or sports. So whether I go running or I lift weight, this sequence is designed for those of you who are maybe a little hypermobile because not only does it help to obviously release the hips in a certain way, it's sort of active mobility. So we do a lot of work to stabilize as well in that end range. One of the biggest goals in my life that, that's continuing is just to maintain um, as much strength as I have flexibility and as much flexibility as I have strength. And that's going to keep me injury free, but it's also going to keep me, you know, just feeling good, feeling liberated in my body but this is a sequence that helps me with my sciatica it helps to um, switch on my glutes activate my core um, but also mobilize the front of my hips which tend to get a little bit tight especially these bad boys and um, by the way that's my view gorgeous no without further ado I will let you get on with the sequence uh, anything else I need to tell you don't forget to subscribe so that you get more of these videos and that's the end let's go by the way this is also a sequence if you're not snowboarding to just integrate into your daily life it can be part of like a morning routine I prefer doing this than just doing like a standard yoga practice so let's get on with it come onto your back <sighs> And we'll just grab hold of the legs and just start to take them around in circles. So we just want to lubricate it, the, the hip joint, a little bit there. And make sure that the legs are nice and heavy as well. Keep them nice and heavy. I'm, my arms are doing all the work here. And then we'll go the opposite direction. So taking them around, keep it nice and slow. And then come back to center, hug the right knee into the chest, left leg extends to the floor. Grab hold of the thighs, start to pull up and around. So we're creating some traction, some space in the hip joint there, which is particularly good. Maybe not so much on the first day before you've even stepped out into the slopes, but when you get to like the seventh, eighth, sometimes even 10th day, you're like, oh my God, my joints can't take it anymore. And this is such a great sequence and it's such a great thing to do to kind of create some more space and hopefully stimulate some more synovial fluid into the joint so it stays nice and healthy. Let's take the leg across the body down to the floor. Come into a twist. Right arm is gonna reach forward. It's gonna go up and around. Forward. I hope I don't keep hitting the mic. Forward, up and around. One more time. Forward, up and around. Good, bring it back to center. Hug the knee back into the chest. Change sides, left leg hugs in, right leg extends, shoulders stay nice and relaxed and then grab hold to create a little bit of space in the joint. Just know that I'm going to move relatively quickly through this sequence. This is not like some slow relaxing yoga sequence. I will move fast. The idea is to keep it dynamic because we do want to, like I said, stimulate the nervous system so that you're prepped, primed and ready to get out onto the slopes. Let's take that leg across the body. Come into the twist. So from here, hopefully we don't get any nippage. <laughs> Reach around, up and around. Forward, up and around. One more time. Forward, up and around. Now just because I'm moving quickly does not mean that I'm ignoring the breath. Come back to center. I still try to keep everything breath synchronized. Both feet flat onto the floor. Grab your hips, tuck your tailbone, belly in, bring the hips back down, but keep that tuck, yeah? Ribs down as well. From here, let's lift the hips off, grab your butt cheeks, make sure they're firm under there, and then we'll drop down and then lift up. Two, three, four, five, six. Put your mind into the muscle. Feel like you're really squeezing through the hips. Eight, core stays nice and tight, nine. 
11 and 12. Good, arms by your side. Let's go single leg, bring that knee in. Now I do it slightly differently to really make sure we get the glute. So we're gonna really hug that knee into the chest, right with the right hand, left hand comes to the back of the head. You're gonna roll. So see how I've lifted up here? Push, come back, push, come back. Three, four. So you're kind of rolling on the spine here. Spine stays flexed. And it's that flexion that enables us to really get that glute involved. So we get that glute hip extension. Nine and 10, change sides. So head in, we're flexing through the spine. Grab hold with the opposite hand, lift up. One, you should be rocking. Two, three, four. Five. Don't jerk this leg to get it up. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. Hug the knees into the chest. Squeeze them in. Rock from side to side. We're going to rock all the way over onto your side here. Okay. So, so out my nippage. Good. Microphone's kind of pulling on the activewear a little bit, which is making the nips pop out, which we don't want. Bottom leg is bent. Top leg is straight. Hand is down, okay? We're gonna do a side lying hip raise, hand on the hip. If you're really struggling, put the hand down, okay? This is to get the top part of the glute open. Now, this is really key, and I'm just gonna explain it very quickly. Bear with me. When you're snowboarding, what you really need to make sure of is that the glutes don't switch off. So that was a bit wide. But when you're down in that snowboard, the temptation, and as you get tired, is that your knee's gonna come in, you're gonna get that knee valgus. But in order to really have good control, right, to be able to carve properly, you need to have your glutes switched on, particularly glute med, switching on, pushing out, so we get a little bit of external rotation and really switch on here. Now this exercise is gonna help to strengthen it. Now I don't wanna exhaust it, so we're not gonna do too many repetitions, but let's say this isn't before your snowboarding um, session and this is like just you're just at home you're wanting to prep for a snowboarding holiday or you're just wanting to strengthen that part of your glute you would do two more sets after this to actually work towards strengthening it so we're just going to do one set and one set only top leg extends tipping forward belly in i would like to do 15 reps you're going to dig down into that leg let's lift up one two three, four, five. Put your hand on that area if you're not feeling it. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Chances are you felt it. You guys know if you do my videos regularly, you know, guys know that I love this uh, exercise a lot. Okay. So tipping over, belly in, core tight, yeah? Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Oh, perfect, come up, hands come down, fingers point forward, we're gonna take the legs from left to right, or that was actually right. <laughs> so right to left, take them over to the side. Try and keep your hips on the floor. So the temptation is just kind of like flop from side to side, but that defeats the purpose. We're trying to get internal rotation here. So I don't mind if it pops up a little bit, but the internal rotation feels so good because it's generally the opposite of what we're doing. And also those adductors get kind of tight. So we just wanna pull let the knees drop side to side. You'll notice how tight your hips are when you try and internally rotate and then you're like, whoa, Nelly. Okay, so we wanna just loosen that up a little bit. Good, and then let's come into the right side. We're gonna bring that right leg down, left leg goes back behind you. So I'd like you to come into pigeon. So in your pigeon position, we're gonna make it an active pigeon because this is much healthier for your glute. And also we don't wanna switch those glutes off by just kind of like flopping down. We wanna keep everything nice and active here. Okay, so nice and strong, core tight, nice and active. Take your arms back behind you, maybe even interlace the fingers. You get a bit of a chest stretch. If you're really struggling with this, you can place your fingertips on the floor, but don't 
just kind of push up and down. I want the glute to be working while it's in a stretched position, okay? So we're getting that functional range of motion here. Belly in, breathe in, exhale. Try to bring the forehead to the floor, push back up. And again, two, three. So let yourself get the stretch, four, five, and six. Good, from there, take the hands down, press back. Downward facing dog, walk out through the heels, shake out your head, yes and no, back of the neck releases. Good, from here, inhale, come forward into a push-up position, core stays tight, lower down. Roll the shoulders back, lift up through the chest, and we're gonna start to lift into an upward facing dog. Now, upward dog, is not this kind of like saggy compression of the lower back. We want it to be very active. The whole point of upward dog is to actually stretch your lower abs and your hip flexors. But so many people, when they get saggy, all you're doing is compressing the tissue in your lower spine, uh, com compressing the vertebra of your lower spine. You're not getting any real tissue stretch here. Okay, so what we wanna do is push down, roll the shoulders back, lift up through the chest, and squeeze your glutes, pull the belly in. You'll feel the lower abs really stretch here and release open. If you think about both skiing and snowboarding, you're in that very flexed position. So this is nice to get that extension. And then exhale, press back, downward dog, walk out through the heels. Okay, come into pigeon on the other side. Let's bring that leg down. Now squeezing through the glutes here. Interlace the fingers behind the back if you're going for that, or you can just take them out to the side, have them ready. Let's go for it. Drop it down, lift it up. Drop it down, really get that stretch as you go down, but then contract. Build that strength at your end range. One more. Good, hands come down, let it stretch. Press back, downward facing. Inhale, come forward, high push up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, squeeze the glutes, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, press back. Bend your knees, look forward, hop to a cross seated position at the top of the mat. Take the hands behind you, feet flat. Lift up through the chest, take a breath in as you exhale. Lift the hips. Tuck the tailbone. Inhale, come back down. Exhale, lift it up. So we're working the glutes, the hamstrings. Also working your arms. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Bring it back down from here. Let the left leg come down. Pull that right heel in. Tuck the tailbone. Tuck the toes in as well. So lift the hips, tailbone tucks. Come down, left forearm, maybe right forearm, maybe all the way down. If you go down and there's a big arch in your back, all you're doing is again, compressing that lower spine. You're not actually getting the tissue stretched through the front here. So if you can't do a flatter spine, then just push yourself back up. Hold it here, breathing, relax the shoulders. We're gonna come back up, stay on your left forearm, Yes, yeah, so the left forearm's down on the floor, right arm is up. We're gonna go up, reach over, twist. Down, up, and twist. Up, and twist. We'll push all the way back up, take the hands forward, release the leg, changing sides. So before we do, let's just re-extend. And then drop back down, good. From here, right foot comes down, left heel comes in nice and close. And then from there, we're gonna lift the hips, tuck the tailbone, come down. Right forearm, maybe left. Maybe you can go all the way down into it, keeping that tuck. Pause here for a breath. Full exhale out. Come back up onto the right forearm, so you'll be able to see it better on this side. Inhale, left arm goes up and you twist around. So down, inhale up, getting that whole fascia line right from like the pinky down the side of the body, all the way down into the hip, 
the lower back. One more time, inhale and exhale. Good, come down, release, let it go. Hug the knees into the chest, squeeze the knees all the way in. Rocking from side to side here. Okay, last one. I just wanna do one more set to re-switch on the glutes. So from here, we're gonna do that rocking set and that's it, okay? So knee hugs in, opposite hand grabs hold of the leg, hand to the back of the head, core tight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Change sides, keep the head lifted, grab hold. Let's go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Hug the knees into the chest. Bring it up, come into a standing position if you can. Now, for those of you that are super, super tight, this next exercise that I'm gonna suggest is quite challenging. Feel free to just watch it and, and try whatever you feel you can. Those of you that are a bit more flexible, this is a really good exercise for you to build stability at that end range of your flexibility. And it really helps for those of you that might be hypermobile, but also like to do any kinds of sports like running, um, snowboarding, sprinting, anything that you know heavily involves the lower body cycling. Um, yes, you have great range of movement, but you wanna make sure that that range of movement is supported by stability. And so this is one of my favorite little sequences. If you're like, Shona, that is completely ridiculous and impossible for me, then just watch or stop the video <laughs> and you're done, go snowboarding. Um, otherwise, watch or do. Okay, so from here, hanging forward in ragdoll, shake out your head. So we'll go left, right side is gonna step back into a lunge and I want you to lengthen the body here, reaching forward. From here, we're gonna twist around and come into this sort of martial arts like pose. You're gonna let your hips come down to the floor, drop the knee in. So internal rotation, but we're trying to keep the hips square, watch the knee. If you really struggle with internal rotation, you'll find that the pressure just pulls on the knee a lot. So it might be something you wanna work on in an easier way. Come back up, find the strength to push back, find the lunge, and then we step back to standing. Back again, step, turn around, martial art position, drop it in. Oh, hey! Come back up, and then we come to here. Stand it up. Sierra, do you wanna be in my YouTube video? No. <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. So, we're gonna step back, left leg. Actually, let's go right leg. So step back, right leg. Come around, drop in, back up, twist, stand up. Last side, back, twist around. Drop in, up, find that strength, stand up. I like to do that before I squat, before I run, like I said, before I snowboard. It's a really nice way to get everything kind of switched on, but also stretched. It's like dynamic mobility, lengthening and strengthening at the same time. I hope you enjoyed that and make sure you hydrate. What else do I need to tell you? Stay safe on the slopes or whatever you're doing. Good. Oh shit, I forgot to say. One really key thing that you should do before you go on the slopes as well, this is just an extra tip, is make sure that you subscribe to my channel. <laughs> this is like behind the scenes of YouTube. I've got my mic on. I just filmed a little sequence there, which I'll kind of show you a preview of in this vlog, but, um, but isn't this a cool space? This is where I taught the yoga this morning. Um, and let me show you some of the Vara clothes. Um, so, that's basically it. Uh, I'm about to pack this baby up. And look at how amazing Courchevel looks. Isn't that beautiful? <sighs> this is so good. I love this hotel.